Boom! What's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's your man 50 Grand, your boy Chips Ahoy, and I'm back with another video. Today's going to be a little different. We're not talking gear, okay? We're going to go over the pluses and minuses of doing a first look or not doing a first look. Also, I'm going to give you some alternatives. If you don't want to do a first look, we can give you something to where you guys don't see each other, but you have a little bit of fun. Let's crack them. Okay, so this video is going to help service two groups. This is going to help service brides and grooms if they've been contemplating whether or not they should do a first look. Uh, but it'll also help out uh, photographers, especially uh, photographers that are new to the wedding game. And you're getting into helping your couples plan timelines and things like that. And they're asking a lot of questions. And you kind of want to understand, you know, what's the benefits of doing first looks versus no first looks. And uh, so we're going to tackle all that for you guys today. Um, now, for me... If a bride and groom reaches out to me and they're unsure of what they want to do as far as a first look or to not do it, I always tend to lean towards the first look. I think the benefits far outweigh um, the benefits of doing no first look. So let's dive into those right now. Um, I, always tell, I always tell my brides and grooms, you're going to get 40% more portraits if you do a first look. You're just going to, because you're going to be able to knock out so many things before the ceremony in, in some decent lit times, whether you're inside or outside, you're going to, you're going to be able to shoot the first look, which is a very intimate um, setting as it is. It's just the bride and groom. Well, I mean, if they want people to watch, they can, but typically it's just the bride and groom. And you can pick fun places to do it. There's, I've done them on bridges and different things like that. It just adds some more photos uh, to your album or your gallery that's going to uh, paint a really cool uh, story for the day. Um, you're also going to get to enjoy a cocktail hour. This is a big, a lot of brides and grooms, you think about your wedding day, you've got family and friends flying in from all over the country. Some coming in from different parts of the world. So you haven't seen these people. And during a wedding day, from start to finish, I mean, you're getting ready with the girls, he's getting ready with the guys, um, hair and makeup, you got to do some bridal portraits. We got to do some groom portraits. There's a lot of different things you got to do during the day. So the first time you're seeing a lot of your family and friends is as you're walking out for the ceremony. And then if you don't do a first look and you have to do family and full bridal portraits and then bride and groom after that, you're probably going to miss the entire cocktail hour of being able to mingle and shoot the shit with family and friends. Now, sure, later during the reception, you can uh, party with them on the dance floor and things like that. But that's when like the music is a little bit more raucous. Uh, people that drinks, so you know whether or not you're having amazing connections with these people you haven't seen in a while is you know who knows, right? So just to kind, of, I'm going to recap after each, each step. You're going to get if you go with the first look, you're going to get 40% more portraits. Okay, you're going to get to enjoy your cocktail hour. You get to do family and bridal party before the ceremony, um, and that's big because, like I just said, after the ceremony, you essentially get to just go enjoy cocktail hour and hang out with your friends. You also get essentially two bride and groom sessions on the day, possibly three. You get to do the first look, which is just you two together. I, uh, any photographer worth his salt immediately after the first look is going to keep you guys there and do some bride and groom portraits. Um, later, even after the ceremony, we can do some more bride and groom portraits when the light is better or around golden hour. So you're getting more a bride and groom time, more portraits for that, which a lot of brides and grooms love. Those tend to be the ones that they print out. You know, the big prints, the, the bride and groom shots. So you're getting more bride and groom shots. Also, another perk, and this is the last on the first looks, and I think it's one of the most important. It gives you a big pressure and tension layoff. All my brides and grooms, after they do first looks, it feels like they've had a moment. It feels like they're able to exhale. All this tension seems to be building during the day. And, you know, wedding photographers and videographers and planners, we do our best jobs to try to keep you guys loose because it's supposed to be the best day of your life. You don't want to be stressing all day, but there is a natural tension that builds as different stages of the day keep going and keep going and you're getting nervous to see him and he's getting nervous to see you. And there's so many people at the ceremony. That's always a little, you know, that can, that can give people anxiety when you're coming down the aisle and everybody's staring at you. Um, so to be able to do that first look, see each other alone for the first time and be able to hug, maybe kiss, talk about what you've been doing for the day, all my brides and grooms have always said it's a big tension let off. And then the rest of the day goes so much smoother. So I think you really have to consider doing a first look um, 
if, if you're somebody that holds anxiety, uh, if you haven't had the dream for your entire life that the first time he's going to see you is coming down the aisle, I think the benefits uh, for a first look are pretty big. Now, the benefits for not doing a first look is like nostalgia. Like if you've always had these dreams and ideas in your mind for your wedding, that he's going to see you for the first time when you're coming down the aisle. And since it's the first time he's seen you, he's going to cry. Uh, and uh, you, you don't mind doing the family and bridal party stuff after, then I think you got to roll with that. Like if, if it's always been your dream as a little girl or a guy growing up that that's the first time you're going to see each other is come down the aisle. If that's your dream, then don't let anybody sway. Okay, that's, that's what you've had in your mind for your entire life. Then, you know, fulfill that dream. We're still going to get bride and groom photos afterwards. You're just probably not going to get to join the cocktail hour and things like that. And you'll get some less portraits uh, in your gallery on the day. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but I will say to this, like a lot of brides will be like, well, I want them to see me the first time when I'm coming down the aisle. I'm, I want to get tear works. I'll tell you this. If he's going to cry, he's going to cry during the first look and again when you come down the aisle. Some guys are criers, some are not. Some will not cry during the first look and some will not cry when you're coming down the aisle. Some will cry during both. If he's a crier, he's crying when you're coming down the aisle and he's crying during the first look. So keep that in mind. Know, keep that in mind. Know your man. And uh, yeah, I just think you got to keep that in consideration when you're picking what you want to do. All right, now we got some alternatives though. If you don't want to do a first look and you want him to see you when you're coming down the aisle for the very first time, we do have alternatives. You can do something called a first touch. That's where you guys can hold hands and be close to each other without seeing each other. A lot of times photographers will do this on like the edge of a building. So somebody's on this side, somebody's on the other, and you guys are holding hands. Or people can do it back to back and they hold hands and say some words to each other. Uh, so that's an option. There's also a similar option with, which involves reading the letters that you've written each other for the day, which is kind of nice if you think about it. So somebody's, your special somebody's written some special words and you actually get to hear them in their voice as you guys are back to back and you guys can read letters to each other, uh, hold hands, say a few nice things. And you know, that will probably lessen some of the tension if you don't do anything uh, than if you didn't do that, right? So like that'll lessen the tension, just having some words with each other. I don't think as much as the first look, uh, but it, but it will help and you'll get some cool photos that will go in your gallery. Okay, so that's it. Like those are my pluses and minuses. Uh, if you are a bride and groom and you haven't really been sold on an idea, I as a professional photographer would push you in the direction of doing a first look. I just think you're getting so much more for it. 40% more portraits. Um, you get to let off that pressure and you get to enjoy cocktail hour, which gives you more fun photos as well, versus if you hadn't been able to enjoy cocktail hour, some of the toasts and laughs and uh, smiles that you would have with people seeing them for the first time, I think are, are they come out a lot more genuine and, and happy than later further in the, the reception. So you're getting a lot there, and uh, that's what, the way I would lean you. And if you're a photographer that's new in the game, or maybe you're not new in the game, and every time this comes up during building timelines with your couples, I would push them in the direction of doing a first look. Not only are you getting more portraits, which are uh, fun shots to fill the gallery, but you're making your life a little easier too, because you get everything done, family, bridal party, first look, some bride and groom, you get everything done before the ceremony. So when the ceremony ends, life is easy for you. You can do some more bride and grooms, and then just go get some casual shots of them enjoying cocktail hour, and get ready for reception, where you finally get to sit the fuck down and enjoy a meal, my friends. So that's, that's where I'm going. There's pluses and minuses for both. If, you, if you've always wanted to see you first time coming down the aisle, stick with it, okay? But I would say pick uh, going back to back reading letters or a first touch. If you haven't always been sold on that, go with the first look. You won't regret it. More photos, uh, more free time, less pressure. You're gonna love it. Now, I'm gonna leave you guys with some photos of different first looks and scenarios that I have done in my many years of shooting weddings. So thanks for tuning in. Please like, please leave a comment, please subscribe, leave a comment. Leave me some comments. I want to engage with you. I want to engage with you cats. God, I can't speak. I'm doing a one take Jake here though. Leave me something, subscribe, like, I love y'all. Stay tuned. We got photos for you right now. Peace.
Get all that.